I'm Kristen Taylor of Blue Mountain Stable, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint Sabino and Sabino-like model horses. I will walk you through supplies, step-by-step -step instructions for this unique pattern, and my tips and tricks for painting white markings so you can make your very own Sabino horse. So let's talk supplies. First off, you will want a model to start with, and if you're a beginning customizer or if this is your first ever tutorial, then I would recommend trying to get one of these paint kit stable mates, simply because of the fact that most of the prep work is kind of already done for you and that you don't have to deal with other colors and all the things that go with that. Instead, you're just gonna be doing a little seam prepping on these. For prepping, you're gonna want at least two different sandpapers, one that is really fine and one that's kind of in between fine and coarse. I'm using 320 ultra fine automotive sandpaper here. And when you run your fingers over this, it's not unpleasant to do so, but you do feel just a little bit of a tooth. This will make short work of seams, but it will put in very fine little lines in your plastic. And that's why we have the ultra fine sandpaper. I am using 600, but you can go up as high as 1500. And this will take out those little bit of lines that the first one put in. An optional supply are needle sanding or file rasps. There are two different kinds. There is one that's much more toothier in its metal and another one that is diamond crusted. And I like having both for the same reason that I like having two different kinds of sandpaper. One's rough, one's smooth. Both of these you can get in sets of about five to seven little different tools and they'll run you about $5 each. The next optional supply is Bondo glazing and spot putty. I use this as a filler for imperfections that I can't quite get out with the sandpaper or the needle files. Now this stuff does need a well-ventilated area to work with and it does smell really bad, which is why I recommend it as an optional supply. This is not everyone's favorite, but if you do want to cut down on your prepping work and make life a little easier in that way, you might want to give it a try. Next, you'll want some cleaning supplies and you'll probably already have this around your house. You'll want an old toothbrush for scrubbing down the model and getting rid of all the little bits of plastic that you just sent it off. A dish soap that doesn't have anything fancy added to it, so no moisturizer or anything like that. It's just a strict soap, followed by something that's a little bit gritty. I usually use baking soda, but you can also use Comet, Ajax, or Bartrandis, Friend, what have you. However, do make sure that whichever of those you pick, you try to get the version that doesn't have bleach bleach actually doesn't do well with plastic and cause it to degrade. So try to avoid that if you can. Then after that would be primer. And this is a perfect example of how you don't have to go to the most expensive stores to get the most unique, special, expensive thing. Some of your best stuff is actually going to come from the automotive store and cost you about $6. It is an automotive primer that works very well with plastic model horses. I specifically like to get the sandable version because it works really well from your larger traditional briars, your mid-size classics, or as they're now called the Freedom Series, all the way down to your stable mates and micro minis. And it goes on fine enough and thin enough that it won't obliterate really detailed areas like the mains on the stable mate. Next are some PPE, personal protection equipment, two kinds of masks. One mask that is rated for filtering out particulates, and this is your prepping mask. This will keep the little bits of plastic that are flying off the model as you're sanding away from your lungs. However, this mask is not good enough for when you're priming because it's not rated for vapor or paint fumes, which this mask is. And this is one that is in need of replacing its filters, but I left those on here to show you this is all stuff that would have gone into my lungs, and this is primer dust. Next would be a pair of gloves, and I start wearing these right after I've washed the model and before I go to prime and prep it, and before I go to prime and paint it, and the reason for that is to keep off any finger grease or oils that I might have on my hand from getting onto the model and getting trapped on either the primer or the paint, because in the long run, that finger grease could degrade the paintwork a little bit. Next are our painting supplies, and the supplies I'm going to walk you through are for the white Sabino markings. There are a lot of other supplies you can consider for the base color, so your chestnut or your bay or what have you. And since I don't have a whole lot of time in this video, what I'll say instead is to go look up some tutorials. 
You can start with the Briar website. You can start with my own website, bluemountainstable.com, or you can just get onto Google or YouTube and search the color that you want to do and the medium that you want to do, whether that's pastel, acrylics, or oils, and then look at what they recommend for supplies. So once you've got your supplies for your base color, you'll want to get your painting supplies for the pinto markings. I recommend getting acrylic paints. That's kind of the hobby standard for finishing off white markings because they're the easiest of white paints to work with and they play well with other mediums. So I recommend getting two different colors of acrylic, a really bright white, which is usually called titanium white, followed with a much warmer white. So something that is creamy, off-colored white, like Titan Buff. This next color is optional. You don't have to get it to follow this tutorial, but if you painted your base color in any metallics, or if you're trying to go for that healthy summer coat metallic-y sheen that you see on some horses, you might want to pick up a metallic pearly white or iridescent pearl fine, as it's called in the golden. Mixing this with your other colors will give it just a nice little bit of a healthy summer coat shimmer. You will also want to pick up a sealer. It's hobby standard to usually go with Tester's Dull Coat because it's a nice thin matte. It's a little pricey, usually four to six dollars per can, but you can get it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby with the half off coupon. Rust-Oleum and Krylon also make some options that come in much bigger cans like that size that you can get at your home supply store for three to four dollars. And if you're just starting out, that might be your best option. Just remember that those bigger cans of sealer go on much thicker than this stuff, so you'll want to spray it from further back and do it in thin layers to build it up. Another optional tool that I do highly recommend for beginners is the white charcoal pencil. And the reason for this is because this little thing is so handy in blocking your pattern, but I specifically opt for the white charcoal pencil over, say, a regular pencil because this is very forgiving. If you draw out your pattern and decide that you don't like it, the charcoal is removable with a damp Q-tip, which is nothing you can't do with your normal white pencils. Lastly would be your brush supplies. And I recommend having at least three. One would be what I call a blocking brush. And for that, you can look at either a square brush like this or a filbert brush. This will block in the majority of your pattern and get other large white areas like the legs. If you're doing traditionals, this is a good size brush. And for stable mates, you don't want one much bigger than this. In fact, you could go just a little bit smaller even, it will still be fine. After that, you will want a nice round brush, which is the first of your detail brush. This will let you go in and adjust most of the pattern and start getting the actual pinto shape defined, followed by a liner brush. These are two different ones. This is my favorite for traditionals, and this is my favorite for stable mates. As you can see, this one's a little thicker than the other one. So this one, because it's a little thicker and has more hair strands, holds a little more paint than this one does. And I can get more hair details put down on the model before I have to reload the paintbrush. Before you start prepping, look over your model and see if there are any rough seams like these. Remember to put on a mask before sanding. Sanding seams is something more advanced artists do all the time and something a lot of beginners skip, but it's actually very beginner friendly and increases realism, which is why it's important for showing model horses. I'm discussing a little of this process because Pintos, Sabino included, have a tendency to show off areas that are not smooth, more so than darker colors. Because I love Sabinos, I learned the value in taking a few extra minutes for good prepping. Use that coarser sandpaper to run all over the seams and make that belly and the legs beautifully smooth. There were a few divots that I couldn't remove with the sandpaper or files, so I filled them with Bondo. Remember to use Bondo outside if you don't have a well-ventilated room. Finish sanding with the ultra-fine sandpaper after the Bondo dries. Using warm water, wash your model with the dish soap and baking soda, making sure to scrub all over with the toothbrush. Rinse thoroughly and set to dry. And remember, at this point, wear your gloves when handling your model. Always make sure to prime in a well-ventilated area, 
or outside and always wear your vapor mask. Wear gloves to protect your skin. If you are a younger customizer, it's a good idea to have an adult help you with this. Often the first layer of primer reveals spots you missed, but you can sand, wash, and prime again until they disappear. This is how I make my own models buttery smooth. I chose to airbrush black horses as my base, and I do have a separate tutorial on airbrushing that color on my Blue Mountain Staple website if you want to follow along. Let your horses fully cure and mix your white paint. You can certainly play around with the exact mixture, but I usually put in equal amounts of titanium white and pearl white, followed by a drop of Titan Buff to warm it up a little. Then add water and mix until your paint has the consistency of skim milk. Take your white charcoal pencil and while looking at references of real Sabino horse patterns, sketch out the pattern you want. There is one true Sabino pattern found so far, called SB1, but you can also choose from many Sabino-like white mutation patterns known as W1 through 30. While they are all technically different, they have some artistic similarities to remember as a beginner. All generally start from the legs and rise up from the belly. Depending on which pattern, there may be a peak of color on the haunch, another on the belly, and sometimes a peak on the shoulder. Most Sabino and Sabino-like horses usually have large facial markings that can extend to the neck. Doing a little research into different patterns and which occur on which breed can help you find the right reference to help you design a realistic pattern. Arabians, for example, come in a few white mutation patterns, such as W15, which is what I am referencing for one of my Arabian horses. Not every horse breed comes in Sabina or white mutation. This horse was originally sculpted as a Peruvian Paso, a breed for which Sabino white mutation is pretty rare. So I'm referencing several Costa Rican Pasos, which is a little less rare. When I am done, I am most likely going to show this horse as a Costa Rican Paso instead. Sometimes you have to get creative like this when painting model horses. Of course, there is nothing stopping you from painting whatever you want for your collection. After all, this is a hobby centered around fun. Once the charcoal pattern looks good, you can start painting thin layers of white with your blocking brush, applying paint to the legs and larger areas of the pattern. Make sure to give each layer enough time to cure before adding more white. Applying your paint in thin layers and building them up is the key to avoiding brush strokes in all pinto patterns. It can be hard to keep white paint smooth and free of dust, specks, and dark marks. Careful application of your paint certainly helps, but I find that the ultra-fine sandpaper is wonderful in removing flaws as you paint. If you see a speck, let the paint cure and very gently remove it with the sandpaper. After a few layers of blocking, switch to your round brush and start refining the rest of the pattern. Don't worry too much about getting exact detail just yet. Do that for a few layers and let cure. Depending on the behavior of your paints, you may be ready to proceed to the final stage, or you might need to come over the whole area with more washes of white to build up a solid layer. Next, grab a liner brush and add the finer details using small ticks of paint. Apply these ticks following the same alignment of natural hair growth. Google horse hair growth chart if you need a quick reference to help guide you. I will admit this is not a super easy step, but with the right brush designed for this level of detail, which doesn't have to be expensive, and patience, any beginner can do this. If you are struggling, grab that white charcoal pencil from before and use it to add hair detail which is often easier to achieve. Even after 17 years of painting, I like to use the charcoal pencil for some added detail and depth. Look over your pattern and make sure none of the base color is showing through. If it is, grab your blocking brush and fix those areas. Also to add depth to your model, add a tiny bit more of the Titan buff to your mixture.
paint the slightly warmer white into the shadowy areas of your model, such as the white markings under the belly, the bottom of the hocks, and in between those grooves formed between the tendons on the cannon bones. This softens the intensity of the brighter white pattern and creates a more three-dimensional depth. For tips on painting the mane, tails, hooves, and eyes, check out the Briar website, my own website, and YouTube for many great tutorials. Finish painting the details and seal your horse so you can handle it with your bare hands. And there you have it, everything you need to get started in painting Sabina horses, with tips on making your best as you continue to explore this wonderful pinto pattern.